You want details? Bye. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice on a Thursday. Life advice rr at gmail.com. We always have follow-ups. We appreciate them. Kyle sent a few through. Uh, Follow-up on the Gary Player guy. We had a few handicaps chime in, but it wasn't overwhelming. And, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. So appreciate the uh, participation on this one. My parents belong to the same club as Gary Player. Gary plays to like a four handicap, occasionally shoots even par 72 from the members tee. So that's uh, 6,200 yards. While he typically takes a car, I'm sure it was a competition. Gary could play the back tees and kick Connor's ass for 18. I think more people agree with you. So I, I think we're good there. Do we have anything else? Okay, this, this follow-ups. <laughs> there, was, there was some verification done on this follow-up on the Memphis gym fight up between Suave Guy and Man Bun Guy. Maybe it's true. I don't know. Entertainment sake, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I think the guy does something here that makes me think this is real. So uh, here we go. Long-time listener. Uh, I heard the gym fight life advice yesterday. I thought to myself, who in the hell throws hands at the local uh okay he names the gyms we'll leave that out on a monday morning before work fast forward to tonight one of my longtime friends calls me to catch up and right before he hangs up mentions he's getting into an altercation at the gym light bulb immediately went off i didn't want to ask him any questions act like i knew the story so i played dumb and got a brief rundown so his friend is suave guy who got punched in the face that's what the emailer is claiming here he goes, uh, man bun guy who I do not know did punch him in the face multiple times. He said it was insane, unpredicted behavior. We'll be pressing charges against oh, him. Man. Uh, Getting ugly. He said going into the full context details would take at least 30 minutes. So he'll fill me in this weekend. I will report back after I gather more information. Wow, you pulled off a two-parter guy. Good job. Pulled off a two-parter life Ooh. advice update. Good for you. <laughs> now we have to come back. If true, you're a genius. If true, you're a genius, bro. Right. If you're here's the thing though, if if this guy's gonna press charges, he better make sure he wasn't he's clean. He wasn't actually taking pictures of of this chick of this guy's girlfriend though. Uh, well, how are they gonna prove? How's anybody gonna prove that? I don't know, but if I was, then I would definitely not press charges. So like that kind of tells me something. All right. Well, here's the thing: is the guy named the gym? So maybe we'll follow up with the original gym employee and be like, was it this gym? Yeah. And if it checks out, then we'll read part two of the email because I don't want to turn this into a, you know, some guy having fun making shit up. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> From Daniel Steele. He said he was taking pictures, but he had a man bun. All right. We do have real ones here. Although we did have somebody ask us if we should do an F1 QB stock game. So F1 stock game. We haven't done any F1. Kevin having his own F1 pod, I'm really Derailed happy for this him. Whole but, shit. It, but it sort of fucks our whole going abroad thing. <laughs> which didn't, like, I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Congratulations. Can't wait to come on. And now I'm like, yeah, it kind of fucking sucks for us, though. So I, I'm happy for the company. I'm happy for Kevin before I am upset about our fourth best segment well those are all nice things yeah. to say but yeah you know but i believe it i believe it because if i were really pissed i just wouldn't say anything um <laughs> i and i'm not really pissed but it was dawning on me that i go yeah we haven't had kevin on for going abroad with three races in oh <laughs> uh, that's so funny if i was if i was really pissed i'd do the manly thing and suppress my anger and not talk about yeah, it yeah we would have yeah, started me. 10 no. minutes late I, just talk about i am that telling shit. you <laughs> i am telling you right now if i were pissed i would i would just yeah internalize all of it i wouldn't I'm, okay, kevin, why, i'll say it i'm pissed what version of this would I not be having for Kevin Clark, right? Like, there's no version of anything that he would do. I wouldn't be happy for the guy. So, all right. Um, a stock update, though, on F1 would be much easier to figure out. So, Yeah, but I got to figure out a way to, to make it like, all right, who's undervalued? And you're like, Haas, obviously. But <laughs> how do we calculate the value? Because we were using QBR with a win. I like the formula for QB stock because it's, it's very easy. The problem for it ever being turned into like a real applicable money making thing is I think it's actually if you put your work in, you're kind of 
Like, I don't know that anyone's ever ended up in the red when we've done it. I think I was there. Are, I think I was real close. No, but like I, <laughs> I, I, I pitched it close. like I think Jimmy I pitched Garofalo, it like big five years ago. On. There was some guy that I knew, and it, it's how this shit works. And he was going to try to get his slice out of getting me in a conference call with somebody else. He didn't even understand it. He just thought, oh, Rosillo has a Yeah, he gets show. it. He must get it. <laughs> right. So I pitched it to not FanDuel, but it was something in its infancy of going, all right, how's this work? And then all the guy did was poke holes in everything I did. And I just went, hey, it's super easy. We just get off the phone. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? It's a better segue like, than a business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I would like to figure out a way to maybe have this this be something that would work and, and partner with somebody on it. But it wasn't that there weren't flaws because there are. It was that it was like getting notes on a script where somebody's like, Well, I have to tell you all the things that you wrote wrong or what you've done wrong and what I don't like about the story. And you're like, Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Right, cool. So, all right. It does exist, though. There are they've tagged us and stuff. Yeah, I've been yeah, getting things. I think it's kind of hidden, though, the formulas of how they figure out what these stock prices are. So it's a little sketchy. I don't know. I'm not telling people not to do it, but I'm also saying be careful. No, we've gotten a ton of people saying, oh, this place ripped this off or this place. I, first of all, it wasn't the most original idea ever to begin with. And people have talked about this fantasy sports stock market thing for years. So. I know that A-Rod's actually trying to figure out something. I mean, I remember reading something about this years ago. I was just trying to figure out a quarterback thing that made it a really easy segment, and it was a lot of fun, and then Cannell fucked it up. Did Spencer just... Dinwiddie do something where you could literally buy stock in him, like in real life? In yeah, he career? wanted to do that. Yeah. I almost did that at a bar once when I was leaving for Trenton, when I was leaving Vermont. There was a guy that was going to like float me 50 grand for the next 10% of my earnings, and even though I was worth nothing... I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, I'd seed you like 50 grand towards your future earnings. And I was like, what am I, a fucking lightweight? Take that money and run, Memphis? Steve Miller, dude. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> sounds like a good Does way to Anybody want to do that to me? <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> are you serious, though? That, that would have sucked. Wait, but it's 10%, well, I, it's, it's 10 forever, or it's 10% for like five years? Like, what is it? Well, he wouldn't have done well the first... <laughs> Eight years. Yeah, you would have totally recouped. Yeah, you would have been you would have been a okay with that. Yeah, but I probably you know I don't know that I would have been like okay I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so <laughs> I I do think that that should be like in the future or some some sort of show, some concept of like the United States in 2075, like all these different elements of what you would have, and like people trying to figure out how to solve things, which we're not very good at, but. um where you just start like going, all right, yeah, no, I'm going to invest in this person. Buy and low on Will like, Smith. Right. Well, but then their wages are are garnished, like based. So there's no way of like getting around not paying the person back <laughs> is that the market starts trading people and prospecting their future and everything. I love it. Great well, script you, idea. Yeah. Are you guys up on, are you guys up to date on the We Crashed? Uh, we Crashed? Because that's basically what the investor that Adam Newman did. He was like, I'm not investing in WeWork. I'm investing in you as a person, as an entrepreneur. And he gave him $4.4 billion. And that didn't, that didn't work out super well for him. Yeah, way up to date on it. Slightly different <laughs> transaction. <laughs> but I, I get your point. Like you're, you're betting on the put. It wasn't, it wasn't. He's like, I believe money. in you. So I'm giving yeah. you money. I don't care about WeWork. I just believe right. in you. Yeah. Stop poking no, I, holes, Steve. Stop poking holes and shit. Sorry. Man. Here you go. My <laughs> yeah. Moving on. It's almost Friday. <laughs> Okay, but what's season three? <laughs> Never mind. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, there's probably already a show like this. Really, like, dude, they did it on the CW, seven seasons. Check it out. Free soda refills. How many is okay? Hi, all. Uh, please settle a dispute between me and some work colleagues that dates back many years. Our office building was right across the street from a Qdoba. Uh, it had the kind of soda fountain where the customer filled up their own cup, as is in the case with many similar places. Clearly, the policy was free refills. All right. At the time, my position was that if you bought a soda cup, that entitled you to literally however many free refills you wanted. You could not only refill in store on that trip, but come back later in the oh, day or crazy. even subsequent right subsequent days and refill your cup. If you're willing to clean out your cup between days, there was nothing stopping you from taking advantage of this policy. My view was that the store made the decision to outsource outsource they just gotta they're selling fucking sodas man <laughs> decision to outsource both the work of refilling cups and the control over refills to the customer yeah that's what they thought they were doing and let's outsource the refilling 
They just wanted you to have maybe an extra Diet Coke with your fucking tacos. All right, so all's fair in love and soda refills. If the store wanted control, they should just put the fountain behind the counter like some other places do. There's plenty of places that actually leave it not behind the counter, and they, they don't think that you're just, it's a free-for-all, by the way. I put the above paragraph in past tense for a reason. At the time I was in my early 20s, maybe a little dumb, more importantly, was legit addicted to soda, which probably clouded my judgment. If you ask me today, I'm now 37. Drunk this has been soda. debated for a long time. Right. <laughs> this guy's getting uh, drunk on soda. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd say there's probably some implied cap on refills. Oh, do you think so? Do you think there's some implied <laughs> cap on refills? Uh, that it's okay to leave the store and come back later that same day but probably not okay to come back the next day even writing it out now i can't really explain where this implied cap comes from societal norms i guess yeah we're not fucking psychos and i have to admit uh that part of me still thinks old me was right and i've just been swayed by years of argument thoughts now you're wrong no one should agree with you this is insane behavior if everybody did this this is the free sample thing at the food court deal you know, we used to joke, roly boly, check it out, Google it. They dice up these little, I don't know what the hell, they were sort of calzones, but they weren't. Honestly, didn't look all that complicated to make, but they just sort of looked good. And college guys would go there, they had free samples. And guess what? If you were the free sample guy, like if you just took the train, dumped it into your hand, you're, you're an asshole, you know, because if everybody did it, the reason we all pay more for insurance is because there's people that fuck with insurance all the time. So if you're going through life thinking, yeah, you know, sure, you can talk yourself into a lot of stuff if you want to. Most normal people do not feel this way. Thanks for listening to the podcast, though. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're not owed anything. I mean, what really, what does it cost? I mean, even if you're a broke college guy, you can probably scrounge up uh, 215 or whatever it costs. Um, and then and then if it's, if it's really important that you get the most, like, most bang for your buck, you're gonna have to sit there and drink a bunch of sodas and try not to feel bad for yourself. But like, you can't, you just can't like, once you, once you cross the threshold, like it's a new day for you. Once you cross yeah. the door threshold, it's a new day. You can't leave. You basically get, you get one fill up and then like the move would be when you're done with your meal, you can get another fill up on the way the out road. and you leave and you get a two cups soda, and that's it. That's the rule. I'm sorry. Like it lo logically. Yes, you're right. It probably cost them 10 cents for a for a soda refill, it's not a big deal in their book. But you're right, Ryan. If everybody does it, then that defeats the purpose and you're ruining it for everybody. So stop. Not much to add to that. I, I just, I think there's like, whenever I see people kind of think this way about certain things, like, all right, you know, hey, Rosilla, do you want to tell a bartending story? Thank you for asking. <laughs> but like, there's just, there's always like a, a person and there's multiple of these people, but They'll say something, there'll be some sort of interaction where you just go, who raised you? What the fuck? Like, how did you, you know, we've all probably had like one of those roommates where you go, you know, five guys are going in the same direction. The six guys like, oh, what about this? And you're like, what are you talking about? And it's not like, oh, I don't want to go with the mob or I don't like to go with consensus. It's not even zigging while people are zagging. It's just that you're like, what are you talking about? And I remember bartending and every now and then you'd have somebody come up and, you know, They'd usually be by themselves, be like, oh, I'm the DD, you know, and you're like, all right, what do you want? Like a uh, Coke and I'm Coke. And I was always like free soda guy. I just didn't mm. care. And honestly, I didn't rip the place off. So I just always felt like, all right, here's a Coke. The guy would come up, you know, hey, can I have another Coke? And depending on the vibe, I might go like, all right, yep, here's another Coke. And then, you know, the guy would be like, hey, can I have another Coke? And he's not tipping. You know, throw two bucks on the first Coke and most bartenders, especially if it's, you know, not like some corporate thing. Our place is pretty divey, so nobody cared. The owners didn't care, by the way. And you're like, all right, dude, you know, like this isn't just free soda all night. Like, I understand it. You're like, hey, it's your responsibility for a designated drive. Do you have to provide free soda, or free beverages? And you're like, yeah, I don't think that's true. Like, I don't think that's true. I think you made that up. I think it sounds good in principle that everybody's like, hey, thank you for taking our responsibility making sure everybody gets home safe, that you're not going to make any bad decisions. That's all great. That's that's three sodas. I don't think it's four. I don't I don't think it's four. It's like, no, 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 you have to do this. Be like, I don't have to do shit. Like this, I don't know that this bill was passed. And the person that comes off that way, like demanding that these are the, it's like, you don't, what are you talking about? Like, you might doesn't, feel like a winner, but you're a loser. And we all see. Yeah. It. Yeah. Like, ah, what'd you do last night? You got four free Cokes at what ails you? <laughs> Kind of fucking awesome guy was giving me a fucking hard time bartender was chirping yeah. me about some fucking cokes you believe that yeah didn't want to give me the fourth one but guy gave in like hey here's your here's your eight and a half ounces of soda over ice all right 
Thanks for listening. Once again, just want to read it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. It's been a tough run for some of these email guys. Oh, you know, we appreciate you sharing. Tough content, dude. Do. Thank you. Okay. All right. This is a good one. We, we have a strong one that's actually relevant here. Could argue the first three weren't most relevant. How to negotiate a raise. 25 years old, six yeah. foot, 190, mostly pull-ups and dips. Huh. Do high reps with decent weight for legs, not jack by any stretch, but I look just fine. I love that about <laughs> you. I love that you look in the mirror and you feel good about it all. All right, big fan from back in the day. I remember watching Ryan's monologue when he shaved his head. Yep, with my buddies, missed that show. Yep, sucked. Little background, I just passed the two-year mark at my company, which is the only place I've worked since graduating college in 2019. We're a general contractor uh, in probably the hottest sector of construction and have grown considerably in the past few years. So I'm trying to figure out if he's the GC. I don't, I would doubt he's the GC at 25, but uh, maybe, maybe he is. Or maybe he's part of a general contractor group and he's underneath another guy. Anyway, I'm a project manager. I could have kept reading. That makes more sense. He's not the GC, he's the project manager, which still has a lot of responsibilities. Uh, much further along than I anticipated at this point in my career. Part of it is due to the company growth, but I believe part of it is because I'm competent as well. Uh, the nature of the company is a lean operation, with relatively low salaries, but typically great bonuses. My first year, I made a good bonus, but last year's bonus was three times the size of the first. I'm now managing an $11 million project with three other smaller jobs. For context, we'll make about 350000 in profit on this job. My bonus will pay out about 25% of the three fifty. So we're looking at a bonus here of like, I don't know, uh, 80 grand, 80 something grand. Sounds good to me, pal. Here's what I don't understand. If it's $11 million project, how's the profit $350,000? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'm imagining that as being... Um, maybe his division or his team, you know what I mean? It might be their profit. I, there's no way that an $11 million cost project would be only profit would be $350,000. All right. So um, my superiors have enough oversight to avoid catastrophe, but they're extremely busy as well. And I'm trusting to manage the budget and all day-to-day -day operations. All right. So this guy's got a serious job here. My salary has risen by a few percent each year but it's still much lower than it would be if I was hired with experience from another company instead of being hired straight out of college, which brings me to my question. I'm hoping you can draw on some experience for a good way to frame uh, to ask for a raise. I'm truly grateful for that to treat me, and I want that to come across. I don't want my boss to feel that I have an entitlement attitude uh, around bonus time um, when bonus time comes around this year. The, with the amount of work I'm managing and inflation on top of that, I feel like a raise is kind of due. Your thoughts would be greatly appreciated. Okay, totally fair question. Let's not get bogged down in some of the profit numbers and everything, because I think he's he's probably hearing me say to me like, no, no, you guys aren't getting the point, um, which is fine. I don't want to get caught up in that. This is a really tough one for a lot of people because people are either wired to ask for raises or you're not, right? Like there's people that will work at places for the longest time and never ask for raises. And it's funny because then people will be like, oh, you know, he just puts his head down, does work and on and on and on. Employers love that, love that person. You're their favorite, okay? If you do your job and you never ask for a raise, you're the best. Like, yeah, let's keep this guy around. Um, and then you can kind of get walked all over and then you kind of screw up your own raise timeline. You know, if you've been at a place for five years and you've done good work and you know it, I mean, some of us don't have the self-awareness to know whether or not we're valuable. Um, there's, there's plenty of people that have no value that are walking around telling you how valuable they are. And there's other people that don't realize their own value that, that never say anything about it. So it kind of gets down to kind of the fundamental, like the squeaky wheel thing, which, you know, growing up, I remember being told constantly, Hey, squeaky wheel gets the grease. And then you get a little bit older and you're like, yeah, sometimes the squeaky wheel just gets replaced too. Um, you can't be the guy that crosses the line and starts, you know, six months in going, where's my raise. So not asking for raises over a long period of time, almost screws yourself over if again you're valuable and, and, and worth it to the company uh and there's no perfect answer for this in that if you never ask for one for like five years that means there's been probably two times you could have asked and now like you haven't started the process of like if you're staying with a company this long of getting raises down the road like you've prevented probably a couple bumps for yourself because a lot of places you know it'd be great if places go it's hard to find the right person for the job 
let me make sure I take care of this stuff. It's just not how business usually works. It's nice when that happens. Some of us have had that happen to us, but for the most part, it's kind of like, Hey, here's what you get paid. And then that's the deal. And thanks for the work. And if you do extra work, that's great too, but we're not going to compensate you for that. So if you truly are valuable to this place and all these things, and you feel like you're being underpaid, even though the bonus structure is coming in here, I don't know if they're going to go, Hey, this isn't about your salary, dude. It's about the bonus structure and the bonus structure tripled. So that's your raise. Like this isn't about a, a baseline thing if it's all about bonuses in this version of, of the job that you're doing i don't know that they're going to be in a huge hurry or you may be using a bullet on a raise uh when they're like yeah fine here's a five to ten percent cost of living raise over the year but it's re it's not even that big of a deal because your your base salary isn't that much so now you've asked for a raise you've used i say bullet you know because it's like all right do i want to waste this fight because if I later on, if there's a bigger picture thing for me here, do I want to waste it over the ego of saying I asked for a raise and then I got it when it doesn't even seem like it's 25% of your salary? So what are you really asking for a raise here? And the other part of this, which is very common, and I hear from younger people all the time, and it's the same mistake that I made when I was younger. The whole idea of like, well, if I went somewhere else, I would make way more dot, 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 then fucking go somewhere else. All right. <laughs> because a lot of us say that shit. And then you're like, I'm not going to take it anymore. And then guess what happens? You don't have this, this tremendous value elsewhere. Now, you may, specific to you, know for a fact that you can get paid more somewhere else. So now you got to time that out because you're going to be willing to leave the place you're at right now. You seem like you're happy. It seems like they're taking care of you. I'd have to know all the real numbers on what the exact base salary number is versus the bonus stuff. But I think the way we've explained it, it makes a little bit of sense. Like, why are you that worried about a raise thing when that's not really even how you get paid? You know, bankers on Wall Street aren't fucking worried about their every two week take home. They're worried about the bag at the end of the year. So I would um, I, I would I would find. All right. So if you feel like you're being underpaid, you can make a ton of money elsewhere and you're OK with leaving your current situation, then go find that out and go ahead and get an offer if, you know, that's what you're interested in doing. And then if you want to, you can bring it back to the other guy. But don't you have to be very strategic. And it's it's there's no perfect way of playing this out because you don't know the attitude of your bosses. Everybody's different. I don't know your attitude. You may be great. You may be delusional, but I'm always big on kind of the timing of of things you know when i was at espn i i asked for full-time employment and i asked for three months after van pelt and i had started the show and it didn't go well i to this day know i'm right i was an afternoon guy full time five days a week and i was filling out fucking time sheets and i was told you know, dot, 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 do the show, see how it goes. And then we'll revisit this. And I was like, okay, great. So I waited three months. I thought that was fair. Hey, the show's going to be really good with Scott. And I, I went up, I said, Hey, the show kicks ass. Can I become a full-time headcount? I wasn't even asking for that much money. I was the least paid of anybody that was regular on the radio, not even close. And I went to the guy and my position was strong. I'd been at the company four years. I'm named Van Pelt's co-host. The show's been on the air three months. It's going really well. Um, I'm pretty upfront, which isn't always great. It can be a lot of, it can be a big turnoff for a lot of people, especially when they're older than you and have been around. And the guy that I went to talk to, he was, he did not have my back. He didn't like my attitude. He didn't like my personality. He didn't even want me to be Scott's co-host. And so I go in and I'm like, Hey, you know, the show kicks ass. Can I become a full time headcount? Can I have 401k? Can I have health insurance? Can I have benefits? And he's like, when's the show going to kick ass? That's what he said to me. Ooh, so I was like, I was like, all right, well, I'm fucked. And guess what happened? I had like this stupid subcontractor deal where, again, I'm filling out time cards and I'm the co-host of the afternoon show in the country. Like, think about that. It's insane. Like, I don't know that that has ever happened at a national network, but that's how they felt. And so guess because I had a little bit of an attitude in that meeting, I restarted the entire clock and they rode my ass out as a part time guy for the next year and a half. Because they were like, fuck him for even asking. Now, I'm right. I was right then and I'm right now. <laughs> but it didn't matter if I was right. It mattered how I was perceived. It mattered how the person felt about me. So we can all go around saying, oh, right, it's been 12 months. I'll ask for a raise. Like, don't go five years without asking for a raise. But 
you know, hey, it's been six months, it's been 12 months, it's been, the timeline of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's really up to that person. Right. I think in most lines of work that I know of, you just kind of eat shit when you're younger. Like I know for a fact, like in media, that's what everyone, the people in media have some of the best stories, but like in the firehouse, if you're working as a teacher, if you're working most places, like you just kind of end up eating shit. doesn't even really sound like you're eating shit. sounds like you're getting like decent bonuses. And it sounds like you kind of get out what you put into it. So that's positive. And he, I remember he said he's young, but yeah, I think there's definitely a difference between going five years and going two years. And like you said, yeah, if you went somewhere else, then you would you would be given all these other things, but you can't you can't just like have this imaginary place that can't wait to hire you. Like you you didn't you didn't start from that place of like anybody coming to get you. You're like happy you were happy to have the job, and you're still happy, but you're just not super happy with the with the thing. So I think I think saying like yeah, inflation. I think that's probably okay, but it'll be like hey, I'm just wondering like you know I'm just crunching the numbers here, and I feel like you know if it's like the inflation's eleven percent, my raise is three percent. I think technically uh, I'm losing like 5% here, but uh, like, but uh, you, yeah, you, the inflation though, inflation isn't like a, it, people are talking about inflation left and right right now. And I'm not going to tell you, I'm some economist that understands it perfectly. But if you go to your boss and say inflation's eight to 11%, <laughs> then I need an eight. To, that's just not how it works. Yeah. It's not I how know, it works. 10% and they would raises say, don't happen. Like I know that. And well, it's also not across the board and all there's a formula for, for how inflation is calculated based on cost to each person. Again, somebody else will probably debate me on this. I mean, um, the company could also just be like, that's all right. Take it up with the White House, dude. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this isn't political. I'm just saying whoever, no, Wait, anybody could be in office, Ceru but like, sorry, Ceru dude, like, I don't know. Are you a Trump guy? No, please, let's not even go down this road. I don't, we've already, okay, here we go. It's going to oh be taken God. out of context. Somebody's going to post it on Twitter. Like, Ceru, Ceru, here we go. Anyway, I just think like, if you're, if they're the boss, like, I just think that's, inflation is an easy thing to just be like dude I, okay man everybody's going through it sorry like it's just a tough time and in, in general like us as a company yeah we have to deal with inflation i think it's an easy deflection for the guy to make my thing would be you have to i would i would bring your personal happiness into this you know i would say hey you know i've been working hard for this company and you know i i, I like my job i like the people i work with but like i just feel like i i you know i, I for the effort that i put in the work that i put in like my happiness partially is dictated by what I'm making. And I feel like I could be making more. I'm not looking to leave necessarily, but I just want to put it on your radar. Because I think if you come in too hot, you're right. You risk the Rosillo of even if you're right, like the guy's going to say no, just because he doesn't like you. Um, whereas if you just kind of <laughs> like, if, 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 if you talk about your sweet. happiness and your future and why you like being at the company, don't no, talk about how much you like working there and how much you see a future for yourself there. But like, you know, you still are interested in kind of looking out for yourself. I think that's like the safest way to do it. Um, and then it's kind of in the guys in the, in the back of your boss's mind. And then, you know, because like, you can't ask her a raise like every year and be like, hey, well, I'm underpaid, I'm underpaid, I'm underpaid. Pick and choose your spots. Talk about your happiness. Talk about your life. And then if it doesn't go the way you want, then I think you should actually start looking for other things. And then you need actual leverage. Yeah, you got to have the yeah. real leverage. And you got to remember that you got to eat shit on the way up a little bit. Like, congrats on working your way up there. Yeah, you've been at it two years. Um, but Saruti brings up some good points there. Uh, look, I had one negotiation very early on at ESPN where the stock market was just down that week. It wasn't the housing crisis. <laughs> the stock market just had like a bad week. <laughs> and and the guy who was doing my deal, and again, it wasn't like I had, you know, Skipper wasn't exactly going, where are we on Rosillo's new extension? You know, that was not the level <laughs> I was at. He didn't care. He didn't know what the hell I was making. And the guy was like, ah, tough week for the Dow. I was like, wait, that's how we're opening negotiations? <laughs> Like he was planting the seed in my head because the Dow had had a bad run of three or four days that, you know, don't like we're, that you're, you're off. Don't even think about it. About. About. Right. And I'm like, what? <laughs> the more I'm thinking about it, the better it is. <laughs> no, and you'd have, it's to an incredible known, line. <laughs> you'd have to know the guy too that, that did it. I'm not going to explain any greater detail, but I just was like, wait. And then I, I heard that I got less than I wanted because the guy didn't want me making more than him. No, oh, man. What a shit show, huh? Dynamic. What a shit I show have, that place. I have, I have so many fucking terrible contract stories. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. That's our contract podcast offshoot. We're gonna we're gonna go back and forth with F one yeah, and, I might and contracts. To, I'm, I might have to be retired for that one. <laughs> this will be the tell all book. That's yeah, it'll have. just be like, all right, here we go. The literal, I'll never work in this town again situation. We're yeah, like, ah, fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. I'm like, I got my GC license. We got the insurance. I got all the whole new. 
<laughs> I got my belt and all my new DeWalt stuff I'm not going to use. <laughs> you but, just hired this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, our, our I'll look, email here. I'll look at trucks. There's this truck that I want down the road, and then I'm like, I'll put a lumber rack on it and be like, well, that would have come in handy a long time ago. Not sure you're going to be hauling too much pressure treated around. Like, I don't know. I It'd be just, fun I to, just love to the switch way. on the street cleaning days. Fun to try to wedge that into a little spot. Somewhere. Yeah, that's the other problem is, is, is I have street cleaning two days a week. And I'm like, if you do that, where are you parking? You got a dually. You're getting clipped every Wednesday by some, by some guy just sc scraping up against your extra wheel. Dog people are just keying my dually because mm. there's less space on the sidewalk. <laughs> your, your trunk's full of dog shit and green bags. Tons of dog the shit. The bed's just full of dog shit. Uh, what a fun time this has been. Thanks to Kyle and Steve. <laughs> As always, enjoy the start of the NBA playoffs. Bill and I will be ready to go after full action for game Saturday and Sunday. So please check out Bill's Sunday, all of his pods and my podcast. Please subscribe, ring or Spotify.